I think most guitar players that are fans of having reverb on their presets are always looking for ways to take the reverbs they have and make them just a little bit better. Sometimes that can happen with some of the parameters that maybe we're a little bit afraid of using or that we don't understand, but there are some parameters within a lot of reverbs that can be very, very powerful if we understand what they do and we know how to use them. Today, I'm going to be talking about just one of those parameters and something that a lot of folks seem to be a little uneasy of, maybe because they don't understand exactly what it does and something I've had a lot of questions about as well, and that is the pre-delay parameter on our reverbs. And they can be extremely powerful in the Helix if we know what we're trying to accomplish with them. So without further ado, let's head over to HX Edit and see if we can't get some reverbs sounding even better than they already do. So here we are over in HX Edit and I have a little preset set up here uh, utilizing basically my little uh, template that I usually use, except I've taken the reverb out as you can as you can tell here. Uh, what I have is a Matchstick Channel 2, basically I think just with stock settings that come up when we pull it up. Uh, the 212 Match uh, G25 cab, I think I maybe change this out to a 121 ribbon, two inches back, I love that. Mic on this particular amp, uh, and this just sounds like this. <laughs> Always easy to get a nice tone out of that amp model. Now let's pull in a reverb here. And for this, I think I'm going to come over to the one of the newer reverbs called the Dynamic Hall. And here's the settings that pop up with this, just by stock. <laughs> Very nice reverb. Now, I'm not gonna play around with anything other than I'm gonna put the trails on here in case I switch in and out of this. Um, I'm going to deal just with this pre-delay pre setting. I have the decay at four. Mix is around 39%, but let's actually jump that up to about 50%. <laughs> Okay, and we have our pre-delay control that we're going to talk about. So what does the pre-delay actually do? The pre-delay is basically telling us how long it's going to take before the reverb kicks in after our initial note or transient that we hit. So we have a range of zero milliseconds, meaning as soon as I hit that note, the reverb is going to kind of be right on top of it. Or I can go all the way up to 200 milliseconds, meaning when I hit that first attacked note or chord, that it's going to be 200 milliseconds before we hear any reflections back from that reverb. Now you might say, how is that going to change things? Or how is that going to help me? Uh, a lot of folks might just ignore that and leave it and could be missing out on a really important parameter to get their reverb sound in the way that they want. To illustrate this, let's do this. Let's go to the mix control and put it up to 100% so we have no dry signal whatsoever. All we're going to hear is the reverb after I strike the string. So it's gonna be important that you watch my pick attack when I'm hitting the strings here and listen for when the reverb comes in. So you'll notice here, I'm gonna hold my guitar up so you can see that better when I hit the actual strings. When I hit it here with it set at zero milliseconds, you're gonna hear that reverb immediately. Now, if I move that up to 200 milliseconds, watch when I hit the strings now. Two hundred milliseconds later, we hear that reverb come in. You might ask, well, what good is that? Well, one thing when people want nice, big, lush reverbs, let's go up here to about fifty percent with this four-second decay, and we're going to bring the pre-delay down to zero milliseconds. And I'm going to play a little bit, and I want you to listen for what you hear. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, a lot of folks listening to that might think it sounds quite nice and it really doesn't sound bad. But now let's compare that to if we had the pre-delay over at the other extreme of 200 milliseconds. Take a listen to that and see if you notice any difference. <laughs> I'm going to play them back to back for you. When hearing them so close back to back, do you hear what I'm hearing now? When we have the pre-delay set at zero milliseconds, that reverb comes in so quickly on top of kind of the transient attack of my note that it almost gives the sense of dulling it a little bit and washing it out in reverb. So we're going to end up with our tone kind of sounding more distant, almost like it's sitting back, especially if it was in a mix. That is not necessarily a bad thing. That actually may be something that you want. But if you find that you're trying to get a big sounding reverb, but are struggling to have it kind of still stand out a little bit, the pre-delay setting might be your best friend. Now, I'm not saying you have to go to these extremes of 200 milliseconds, but there's probably going to be some happy medium in there somewhere where you'll notice that you may have dialed in the decay the way you like it. Your mix is maybe kind of nice and high-ish, sort of towards where I have it now, say 50%. And you're still finding that your delay is kind of engulfing things too much. Well, that's where the pre-delay is going to come in. So instead of having this sound, Most people I find when they're trying to dial the reverb is go for the mix control, go for the decay. And once they have those, if it's still not right, they're maybe a little bit lost on how to dial it in any better to have it so that they get the decay and the mix they want, but they still have that little bit of openness at the beginning to let the note kind of bloom a bit. So that can make a big difference. Now, what happens if we go somewhere in the middle? Let's go to 100 milliseconds.
So what do you guys think? It's, it can be a subtle setting, to say the least, right? Um, some folks may listen to that and go, I don't really hear a difference. But you have to really listen for the important point in there, which is listen to that note attack, and then when the reverb comes in, listen for the sort of the definition in that first note. Not that it's actually changing the definition of the note, but it's not engulfing that note so much with the reverb and the reflections from that reverb instantly. It's allowing that note a number of milliseconds, however we set it, to kind of just be that note before the reverb comes into it, which gives that impression of more clarity to the note and avoiding having that initial note be washed out by sort of this blanket of reverb. So where should you set this? Well, that's really going to be up to you and the particular situation that you're in and the end result that you're actually going for. Maybe there is a time where you want that note to be just engulfed in the reverb instantly and then you could go all the way down to the zero millisecond setting or a five millisecond, 10 millisecond, somewhere in that range. And then there's going to be times where you don't want it. You want that note to kind of breathe for a while first before it gets engulfed in this reverb. And then we can go up to some of these higher settings. But now that we understand what it does and how it works, that gives us the ability to at least not feel so nervous about experimenting with that parameter. And I think we can get some much better results out of our reverb because of it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of it or enjoyment out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.